Uh, hi everyone and welcome back uh, to the series of uh, solving PEO exams and we are still solving an ill uh, electrical A1 circuits uh, exam. In this question we'll be solving an AC analysis question. This is number two, we solved one before. The main difference between this question and the previous one that we have here two sources. One is represented as a cosine and one represented as a sign. And there are a couple of questions I noticed in the exam when they have this situation. So how to handle it? Let's see in this uh, question. So in this question here, you are requested to use a specific technique, which is the mesh analysis. And they already specified that to you the two uh, mesh currents. So if you have such situation, then you are uh, obligated to use the technique that you are asked to uh, to use. Now, this is an AC analysis, and we said that there are two different ways of representing the, the circuit, either time domain or a frequency domain. The circuit here is given in time domain. You are Your Vs is given as 20 cosine 5t plus 30, and your Is is going as 15 sine 5t plus 20. So we have to change the time domain into a frequency domain. And here you are giving the inductance, the capacitance, and the two uh, resistors. So we need to convert this circuit to a circuit that is basically in time in, in frequency domain. So we'll start with the uh, with the sources. Now the first source Vs is equal to 20 cosine 5t plus 30. Now what I do or what you have to do, you have to have the two sources either as a cosine or as a sine before you represent them as phasors. You cannot represent as them as phasors and one cosine and one sine because there is a phase shift between the cosine and the sine. I usually convert everything into cosine functions. You can convert everything to sine if you are comfortable with as far as both the sources are changed to either the sine or the cosine. So I will keep the cosine as my reference. So I will take the magnitude 20 and the angle will be 30. So here will be my supply. My uh, Vs will be equal to 20 angle of angle of 30. Now the second supply is I of S is equal to 15 sine 5t plus 20. Notice here the omega in both supplies is the same. And for AC analysis to be, uh, be used, it, this is a must that you should have only one frequency in the in the circuit. Now, as I said, this is a sign. I need to convert the sign into a cosine. It's very simple. 15 cosine 5t plus 20, and you subtract from this minus 90. So this is equal to 15 cosine 5t minus, minus 70. And this equal to 15 angle of minus minus 70. So here, this is my resistance capacitor. I will come to these elements later on. This is my inductor. And this is my supply. Now, my supply basically will be equal to 15 angle of minus minus 70. Now, let's come to the uh, resistor. The resistor, I put them as they are. So this is 2 ohm and this is 5 ohm, then we have the capacitance and the inductance C is equal to 0.1 farad, which is equal to minus J over omega C. Minus J over omega, we have it from the supply is equal to 5, and C is 0.1, so this is, is equal to minus J Two. So this is minus J2. For the inductor, it's equal to 2. It is J plus J omega L. It's J times, again, the same frequency, 5 times 2. And this is equal to J10. So this is J10. Now, the circuit is basically represented 
in the frequency domain and now I can start solving the questions. So here we'll have my I1 and here is my I2. The first question says, write the mesh current equations in phasors for the directions of the mesh current shown. So you are, you are given here the mesh current. So you will need to write the equations basically in, uh, in phasors. So I will take KVL to loop number, number one. And the polarity in that loop is dictated by the current direction in that specific loop. So this will be plus minus plus minus. And because both the currents are basically clockwise, when you, took, you do KVL in that loop, it will be the current in that loop minus the other currents. Okay, so we'll take KVL. So we will have here two times I1 minus I2 minus J2, I1 minus I2, and this is equal to 20 angle of angle of 30. Okay, let me collect terms. So two minus J2 times I1 minus the same thing two minus j2 i2 and this is equal to 20 angle of 30 and this is my first mesh equation okay now we'll go to loop number two in loop number two we have a current source now when we have a current source we do not apply kvn why is that because we don't know the voltage here across the current source so we have to assign another variable so you will be adding an equation with another variable so you are complicating your problem instead when we look to this branch this branch the current is going in that direction which is opposite of the current source so from loop number two your I2 is equal to minus 15 angle of minus 70 uh, amps. Okay, so that's this is basically the information we can get from loop number two, and this is point number number two. Now we can basically substitute I2 in one. So substitute equation two in equation number one now we are going now we finished part a now we are going for part b we want to solve for i1 and i2 and when you see i1 and i2 like this it means that we want to calculate their values in phasor not in time domain okay so with that we need to substitute and we need to move on so i will just come here uh, replace i2 with its value and then I will have only one unknown I1 and I will solve for, for this for this unknown. So we'll have two minus J2 times I2 minus two minus J2 times minus 15 angle of minus 70 equal to 20 angle of 30. This with this minus, they will cancel each other. So we have two minus J2 times, uh, sorry, this is I1 times I1 minus, with the minus becomes a plus, two minus J2, 15 angle of minus 70. This is equal to 20 angle of 30. So now one equation, one unknown in terms of I1, then we can solve for this I1. So this is 2 minus J2 times I1. This is plus. I will convert this into polar. So this becomes 2.83 angle of minus 45 times 15 angle of minus 70. So this is times this equal to 20 angle of 30. So we can multiply two minus J2 times I1 plus 
point forty five angle of minus one one five. This is equal to twenty angle of thirty. So we move this to the other side. So two minus j two times i one is equal to twenty angle of thirty minus forty two point forty five angle of minus one one five. Then uh, basically, we need to convert this into a uh, rectangular format and then solve for this. Now, when you do all of this, you will find this is equal to 35.26 plus J 48.5. Then your I1 is equal to 35.26 plus J. 48.5 divided by 2 minus j2. Now convert everything into polar. 59.9 angle of 53.9 divided by 2.83 angle of minus 45. And then your I1 uh, basically will be equal to 21.2 angle of 98.9 so we found i1 and we already from the beginning we know that your i2 was equal uh, to minus 15 angle of minus 70 so now we finished part a and we part b now we want to find part c which is v not here and we want it to be in the time domain okay so v naught so we need to solve for v naught first we'll use v naught as a phasor it's basically equal to r1 which is the two ohms times i1 minus i2 because i1 is going with the polarity specified for v0 i2 is against this polarity this is i1 minus i2 so now we know the value of everything. So this is 2 times I1 is 21.2 angle of 98.9 minus, minus 15 angle of minus 70. So these are the two currents. So now we multiply them. And so we need first to convert these two into a rectangular format. So 2 times minus 3.28 plus j 20.9 minus minus becomes plus 5.13 minus j 14.1 now add the real with the real the imaginary with the imaginary and multiply everything with uh, with two so you'll get 3.7 plus j 13.6 now this is your v0 of t in rectangular format we have to convert it to polar format so that we can basically find the time domain which is equal to 14.1 angle approximately equal to 70 75 that is your v0 now v0 of t will equal to the magnitude 14.1 cosine because that is my reference the same frequency the 5t plus the phase shift which is the 75 so that is basically your v0 of of t now for that specific question we can find v0 of t right away in a very very simple step okay now as you can see here these the r and the c they are basically in series the voltage between this point and this point is your vs okay and your vs is 20 angle of 30 this is 2 ohm this is minus j2 so since these two are in series and i know the voltage across it i can use voltage division so you can use voltage division so you can find that V0 is equal to the main source 2 angle of 20 angle of 30 times this resistance, which is 2, 
across which I, uh, I want to find the voltage, divide by the summation of the two resistors, the resistors and the capacitance or the inductance uh, in series, 2 minus J2, and we do the multiplication, you get the same thing, 41.1 angle of 75. So for that specific part, because it's open, you just need to find V0, you can use this technique, or you can use both and use this is basically to make sure that your answer was the, the correct one.